Hey folks, Pastor Josh here. Hey, how's it going? You know, we've been doing quite a bit here, and we've been looking at Ephesians chapter 4. But first, before we do that, I want to talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about how you can be my partner in ministry, and then we'll go over what's going on new in my life, and uh, we'll discuss those things, and, and, and we'll, we'll talk about it, and we'll get in the Word, and we'll talk about the Word. So, first off, how can you be my partner in ministry? Well, number one, there, there, there actually are three things you can do. There are three things you can do. You can like this video and like the other videos. You can uh, sh subscribe to this channel and you can share the videos. And, and the fourth thing you can do if you want is you can comment on the videos. What that does is that allows the, my videos to be paired with like content and then whereby more people seeing it. Either in the United States or in other countries, other people seeing it. So, that's what you can do to be my partner in ministry. Now, what's going on new with me? Well, yesterday, today is Monday, the, the, the 6th. Yesterday, uh, I was given the opportunity and the, and the blessing, and I'm honored, so honored, to be now the senior pastor of a church in Claytonville, Illinois, uh, the United Brethren Church. It is an honor and a blessing for me to be their pastor, to, to teach them, to guide them in the Word. It's an honor to do so, and I'm blessed that they asked me to do that. So that's what's new with me. And you know, it's been a great, great time. It's been a great time. So let's go in the Lord. Let's go in the Lord, and let's also look at chapter 4, verses 17, and following down. We're only going to do a few verses in this video. This is, a, this is actually a section that we are going to be doing that has um, probably about 17 through 24, so about, about seven verses of Scripture. But there's always a lot when you delve into the Scripture and you delve into what it has to say. So let's go here, put my glasses on, take them off again, whatever. Okay, let's, let's go here, verse 17. It says, Therefore... This I say and testify in the Lord that from now on you walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened, excluded from the life of God through the ignorance that is written that, that is within them, due to the hardness of their hearts, being calloused, they have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. Now, we're going to look at this. We're going to, we're going to delve into it a little bit. We're going, to, we're going to talk about it. Now, it says in verse uh, 17, Therefore I say, there, therefore this I say and testify in the Lord that from now on, you walk as other, uh, you walk not as other Gentiles walk. So he's calling them to a greater understanding of the Word of God. He's calling them to a greater understanding. You are now to walk not as the other Gentiles walk, but as God would want you to walk. And what a wonderful thing to think about because we have to have that walk in our life as well. We have to be, we are called to that. We are called to that kind of walking. We are called to that kind of walking. Look what it says here. And we can mirror this to ourselves. Therefore, I say and testify in the Lord that from now on you walk not as other Gentiles walk. So you walk in the way that God would want you to walk. You walk in that way. Not as other people do. Not as other Gentiles do. Not as other people do. But you walk the way God wants you to walk. And you do it with all grace and all love and all knowledge of God. That's my own emphasis there. But that's what, that's what the understanding is. We walk as though we are different. Because we are different. We are different in God. We are different in everything that we do. He says that you are to walk 
uh, as the other not to walk walk not as not as the other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds in the vanity of their minds listen vanity of mind is something that's very uh, can be very contagious okay it can be something that's very contagious when we have vanity of mind we tend to think about hey you know what look at what I did I'm something so great I'm something so wonderful look at me look at me it's all about me vanity of mind we are to walk different than that not with vanity of mind understand that but we are to walk differently than everyone else differently than everyone else and that's what God would want that's what God would want if you want to have an effect for someone with someone for Christ walk as God would command you to walk walk in that way that's what God would want now look here it says here verse 18 says having their understanding darkened excluded from the life of God through their ignorance that is within them due to the hardness of their hearts listen if you are in a place where you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you're in a place where you've accepted that and you've had that in your life and in you listen your hardness of your heart should not be there Jesus should have taken the hardness of your heart and softened it toward him and softened it toward what he has you do that's what God would want us to do that's what God desires for you and I to do the hardness of our heart should be softened by the Spirit of God as we live and walk and do what God would want us to do we are to have our hard hearts softened by the Word of God by the Spirit of God okay now let's go here he says not to be like them because they're hard-hearted they are they are ignorant now that's not a derogatory thing a lot of times ignorance comes from just not knowing not knowing something listen if when I was a believer when I was an unbeliever when I was a person who did not follow God you know what I followed I followed the sin nature why did I follow the sin nature because that's all that I knew I was ignorant to what God had I was ignorant to the full extended life that God would want me to have I was ignorant to that I was ignorant to that God wants me to not be ignorant but to be completely and fully sold out to him living a life that is pleasing to God that's what God would want us to do and that's how God would want us to react to situations and circumstances in our life now now because of the hardness of their heart they are calloused calloused people tough people we we have seen callous people in our life haven't we haven't you seen rough tough we we call them people rough around the edges that kind of people calloused hard-hearted why sometimes life makes it that way sometimes life makes us hard-hearted when we don't give our life to God we don't turn everything over to Jesus Christ it makes our life hard-hearted it makes us hard-hearted and calloused toward life itself because we do not understand or see Jesus Christ in a full extent of what we're supposed to see him in you see so that's that's the issue that's the problem now we are going to be calloused if we're not allowing Jesus to live and rule and reign in our life we're going to be calloused and hard and hard-hearted and all those things thereby making us ignorant of what God would have for us ignorant of what he'd have for us God sees that God knows that but God wants us to to trust him allow him to soften our hearts toward each other toward him toward other people and in that we are we are softened by God now let's go here being calloused they have been they have given themselves over to sensuality or sexual sin okay sexual sin or the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness now listen 
He's talking about sensuality, sexual sin. Let me tell you something. When sin, no matter what, what kind of sin it is, no matter what, it starts off small. If we continue in that sin, what begins to happen then is we then begin to need more and need more and need more and need more in order to satisfy that desire. Thereby causing us to have issue with moving farther and farther and farther away from God and being more and more and more ignorant to His Spirit and His moving in our life. God does not want you to be ignorant. God does not want me to be ignorant. God wants us to be fully sold out to Him, fully understanding what He has in us for, with us for our life, fully understanding that. God wants that for you and I. God desires that. Okay? God desires that. Now, he says here in verse 18 or verse 19, being calloused, they have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity. There's all kinds of impurity too, with sensuality, and it all just branches off to all kinds of things. And he says, with all greediness, with greediness, we want more, we need more, we need more, we need more to quench that desire. That's greediness. Same thing with, same thing with someone who, what well, well, we consider greedy, someone who wants more money. They need more money, more money, more money, more money in order to quench that desire to have all that they have, but it's still, when you're greedy, it doesn't quench it. You need more and more and more. So we can, have, we can be greedy not only with money, but we can be greedy with everything. Sensuality. With all kinds of sin. We can be greedy with all of it. Now, let's go down here. We are about 12 minutes and 22 seconds into the video. We are going here to uh, verse 20 of Ephesians chapter 4. But you did not learn about Christ in this manner, if indeed you have heard Him and have been taught by Him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off the former way of life in the old nature, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, new nature, King James says new man, new nature, which was created according to God in righteousness and true holiness. Now, he's talking about all of the stuff, all of the, all of the sin that they have. All the sin that they have there. He's talking about that. And then he says, but you did not learn about Christ in this manner. You did not learn about it in this manner. The manner of being calloused and all of those things. You didn't learn about it in this manner. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off the former way of life in the old nature, which is corrupt, according to the, the deceitful lust. Now, it is a call for us, a continual call for us to put away the deceitful nature. Put away those things. Put away the lust. Put away the sin. Put away all of that. That's what this is about. Putting away all of those things. We're going to go a little over today. Not by much, but we're going to go over. But listen, it's putting away those things. Put it all away, he says. He says that you put off the former way of life in the old nature. Put off the former way of life in the old nature. Put it away. Put it all away. And he says, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. This nature, this way of doing things is corrupt. It's corrupt. It's not good. It's not what God would want. It's corrupt. It's deceitful in its true nature. Now, look here. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Renewed in the spirit of your mind. How, 
How, how, how do you become renewed in the spirit of your mind? How does that take place? What happens to cause that to happen? How do you be renewed in the spirit of your mind? How does that happen? Well, for one thing, see I've got my modern English Bible version here. Modern English version Bible here. I'm in it a lot. This book is open more than it's shut. I'm in it a lot. I read, I pray, I talk to God. I allow God to talk to me. I allow God to change things in my life and I apply things to what God wants to be applied to my life. I allow those things to take place. Now, how then do you how then do you change that? That's only part of it, right? We have to be with other believers. We have to be around other believers. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron. And, and you know, we're in Colossians at at church to this this time. We are in Colossians and listen. I'm going to go to Colossians with you for a moment. And I want you to see, see something in the book of Colossians. Where is... Okay. I'm going to move my stuff here. Colossians is where we're going. Colossians chapter 3. And let's look at this. Look at what this says. Starting in verse... Starting in verse 12. Well, let's see. Let me look here. Because there is a part in here that it says that we are to put away all of these things. It says, So embrace as the elect of, elect of God, holy and beloved, as a, a spirit of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering. Bear with one another and forgive one another if anyone has a quarrel against anyone, even as Christ forgave you, so you must do. And above all these things, embrace love, which is the bond of perfection. Let the peace of God, which is also which also you are called to in, in one body, rule in your hearts and be thankful. We are to allow this stuff to rule in our heart. Do you understand that? Rule in our heart. Not, not the things that would draw us away from God, but the love, the things that God is calling us to, those are to rule in our hearts. That was Colossians 3, 12 through 15. But listen, we are to allow those things to rule and reign in our heart. God, God does not want you to, to, be, to be filled with lust and deceit and all of those things. He wants you to be re renewed in Him. Let love reign in your heart. Let love reign in your heart. And look, He says here <clears throat> in, verse, uh, in verse 20, 21. If indeed you have heard this, you have been taught by Him, as the truth is in Him, Jesus, that you have put off the former way of life in the old nature, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit and mind, and that you put on the new nature, which was created according to God in the righteous and true holiness. Listen. In the book of Colossians, it says, put on love, more than long-suffering. Love more than meekness. Love more than all of those things. Why? Why? Why do that? Because love is greater. Christ's love, unconditional love, is greater than all of this. And we're going to put that on. And, and, and in that love, in experiencing that love, that helps us to understand and be able to comprehend everything that God has for us. You see? That's what God would want. That's what God would want. So that's my challenge for you today. Put on the fullness of Christ. Put on love. Put on joy. Put on peace. Put on all of that stuff. Put away. Do away with all the old nature. Do away with the sin nature. Do away with all of it. Okay? Do away with uh, obeying the sin nature. The sin nature is going to be there, but you don't have to obey it. Put away. Put it away. Put it all away. Allow God to do what He's going to do in your life. Well, until next time, we're over about four minutes, five minutes. Until next time, it's Pastor Josh. Thank you for watching Stepping Stones of Faith. Don't forget to like, 
subscribe and share be my ministry partner in this you have a part in this you have a place you have a a part in making this go farther than it has before so until next time thank you for watching stepping stones of faith i'm pastor josh god bless